Hello, welcome to Spotlight on the Art. My name is Karen Stevens and I am your host for this evening. Before we introduce our distinguished guest, let me introduce our distinguished panel. <laughs> Ms. Iris Acker, who is an actress, a writer, and the producer of Spotlight on the Arts. Mr. Bill Hirschman, who is an uh, arts journalist and chief critic for FloridaTheaterOnStage.com. And sitting in for our usual panelist, Michael McKeever, is Mr. Dan Clancy, who is a wonderful playwright. And tonight, our guest is, and my, I'm just bursting with joy to pronounce, is uh, Ms. Mar Ms. Marge O'Neill Butler, <laughs> who is uh, a distinguished playwright. And I'm going to start off asking, you've just had a play accepted into a festival? Yes. Yes? <laughs> Can you tell us which, which one that is and how that process happened? How that happened. Are you talking about the one that was at uh, the Sandrell Rivers Theater in Miami? Because she, if there's a lot of festivals. No, this one March. was up north. Oh, um, Eden Prairie Festival. Yes. That's in Minnesota. I had never been or heard of Eden Prairie, but there was a call <laughs> for a short script, and um, they had over 300 submissions, and I was one of eight that they chose. So I have airline miles, and I <laughs> hightailed it up to Eden Prairie, Minnesota, to see this production. And it was a community-based theater, but it was darn good. I had the right ages in my, in my cast, and it was really funny. I didn't know how funny it was until I heard <laughs> until it, heard. because it was the first time I'd heard it aloud. So um, it was a great weekend, and I got to go out with the cast and the crew later, and it was really fun. And I'm doing another one there in May. I submitted yet another play to their Women's Playwriting Festival. Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they accepted that as well. So I think I might go up for that, as that one. That's great. You specialize in writing short plays. I Is do. I think it's because I have a short attention span. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I find I'm in the process of writing a new long one act, a new long play, but I tend to write short plays because um, I'm very competitive, and there's a lot of calls for scripts online of short plays. And sometimes I write to their theme, or sometimes I look through my plays to see if one of them fits their theme, and I send it out. So that, that raises something I've always been curious about. We go to a lot of short play festivals, critics do, and yours stand out because yours have a beginning, a middle, and an end. What is it? I think a lot of people watching would like to know how writing a short play, a short play, not a skit for Saturday Night Live, <laughs> how a short play writing is different than writing a longer piece? What are the challenges that make it especially difficult? Well, uh, there's a wonderful book out by Gary Garrison of the Dramatist Guild about writing 10-minute plays, and he says, something's got to happen on page three. And by the end of the play, it's got to be resolved, whatever it is. And so I, I take that to heart, and I've found that my plays have been rather successful about that. Uh, because I look at the, the through line. And again, you know, what you say, you, you're not writing skits, or you shouldn't be. Um, I try to write real characters, real people. And the technique works. That's what's that you're published as well. I am. I got published in the best 10 minute plays in the country in 2013. I have a very short five minute play in monologues and <coughs> scenes for women and men over 50. I don't know how I could imagine writing for that category, but there it was. And I've had um, a few other uh, monologues published as well. And for women, women, women. You well, like... you know, there's so much going on now in film and television and stage in particular that the women are being left out still in this day and age. And senior women are being left out even more, <laughs> anybody over 50. So that I tend to write at least one character 
who's over 50, mm -hmm. and usually it's a female, because um, I have a lot of friends who are actors who are over 50, and there's a big pool of them and not so many parts for them, so it's my sort of contribution to the world of theater that I write for women. Um, well, you're an actress uh, as well. What, what makes for a good 10-minute um, play? Um, well, something has got to happen and something has got to be resolved. And the protagonist, the, the lead person in it, has got to feel that, that they've achieved something. At least that's, that's how I look at it. Asking, you know. <laughs> well, how do you set a tone that quickly when, when within a minute, at best, in a minute, you've got to establish your premise, your characters. How do you do that with such so little time and so little space? Or do you just rely on the actors and the directors? I rely on the characters talking to me. I hear their voices when I write. Sometimes I hear Beth Diamond's voice. I have heard <laughs> Andy Radosh's vo Angie Radosh's voice. I hear a lot of voices of the people whose work as actors I admire, and I write to that. My current long play that I'm writing has five women in it, oh. four of which are mature, over, oh. over 60, actually. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. I, I do hear, I know if I were to cast it, I know who I would cast. Mm. Carolyn Johnson, Beth, <laughs> Janet Wakely, Weekly, and uh, the other one is, um, oh, Bennett. What's her first name? Lee Bennett. Lee Bennett. Lee Bennett. Yeah, those are the voices that I hear when I'm writing these characters. Isn't that marvelous? Yeah. 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 When, just... when you sit down um, to write a play, do you know beforehand whether this is going to be a 10-minute play or a full-length play, or are you sometimes surprised? <laughs> I would have to say I'm sometimes surprised because I aim for a 10-minute play and suddenly there's 15 pages. And so uh, I feel like, oh, maybe there's more to say about this. But uh, I do try to aim for the 10 minutes when I'm writing a short play, but sometimes I write more. <laughs> How long have you been writing plays, and what, what got you started doing that? Um, I met and married my first husband uh, teaching in a university. I was teaching dance. I have an MA in dance, and that is very useful as I age, not. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a theater person, and we moved to Vermont. And someone there who was related to the only daughter of Eli Lilly gave us $10,000 to start a summer theater. Wow. So I ran that summer theater for 24 years. While we were doing the uh, summer theater, we realized that there was nothing for the students of Vermont. This was really showing my age. In the 70s, there were very few televisions. People in Vermont were rather poor. There was certainly no cable or anything like that. So when we brought shows to the schools on tour, it was eye-opening mm. for them. And in order to bring shows to school, I had to write them. <laughs> and um, I started off with some traditional um, plays, and then I created my own. I had a play called Everybody's Different, which was four clowns. And there was the blue clown, and he was made fun of because of his color. And there was the skinny clown, and so forth. So I just started writing for children. And I wrote, I think, nine or 10 plays. And we toured all over Vermont, New Hampshire, Upper New York State, and also down into the Caribbean, which was fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so then I really, I was raising children, my two sons at that point. I really um, stopped writing when we moved to Boston. We were still doing the summer theater, but I wasn't doing the writing so much. I was concentrating on acting and directing. And then my husband, my new husband, who's now my husband of 22 years, um, he started writing plays, and he asked me for a suggestion. And I gave him a suggestion about women cops. And he wrote about one act, and he gave it to me to read. And I said, mm, that's not my idea. So he said, I'll write it again. <laughs> so he wrote another 
form of that first act, and he gave it to me to read, and I said, I'm taking my idea back. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote my first full-length play called True Blue about five women cops. That was and a women's was, theater project, wasn't it? It was at the I women's theater project, piece. and it was a great experience because I had um, Laura Turnbull and Angie Radosh and <laughs> Jackie Laggy and uh, Pamela Rosa and um, I'm losing the last one. Anyway, it was a great experience. Jeannie Croft directed it and uh, I kept writing from there. Hmm. I, I sort of, I took a membership in the Dramatist Guild and I thought, well, you know, I can do this. <laughs> and as I was aging, Parts for me were less, directing was a little sparse, and I thought, I love theater. It's deep in my bones and my soul. So this will be the way that I can stay involved in theater. Wow. And, and as an actress, Maude, it's I'm sure it's helped. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, stage managing helps, directing helps, because I know the whole scope of theater. I know what I like and I, what I don't like. I don't like theaters that use lights like optic ballets. You know, it's like an eclipse happens when the lead sings. No, you know, what, did the sun go behind the cloud? What happened? <laughs> so I know what I like and I know what I don't like, and I write toward that. As a result, that's wonderful. Yeah, it really is. Being an ex-dancer, do you ever write uh, plays about dancers or dancing? You know, I haven't, but that's a really good idea. As I recover from my knee surgery, I should write something about a mature actress. It's dancing lessons at the yeah, uh, art so center is a, a great example of a, a dancer who's handicapped. Mm -hmm. So I, I just saw that, so I can't copy that. But it's a good idea to write about what I know. Yeah. yeah. Are, are your plays uh, character or situation based? I think I'd have to say they are characters within a situation. I always try to create a situation. Uh, I just heard that one of my earlier 10-minute uh, plays is being read up in northern Florida. Uh, I've had 14 productions of that, including a production in South Korea, which is so fun <laughs> wow. that my play was done there. But they're just doing a reading of it. And this play is about two people who meet someone at Whole Foods, and the girl is so entranced, she puts an ad on Craigslist to try and find this person, and they meet up. Only it turns out that they are two different people. <laughs> they each met someone, but it wasn't this person. Yeah. <laughs> is there a... Uh, I like that. Can you talk about the process, how long it takes generally to produce one of these? Can you do it in a week or does it take six months? Right. Or do you carry ideas around in the back of your head for a couple of years and then you know what you want to do with it? Are you talking about the writing of it or the Correct, the oh, writing. Okay. Um, I usually write almost immediately when I get an idea. I have this thing in my iPad where it's called notes and I, I just jot down whatever I think of about this, and that's how this newest long play started. Um, it's about four women, one of whom has this house, and she doesn't, she really can't afford to keep it mm -hmm. because her husband mortgaged it without her knowledge and cashed in his pension, all due to gambling. So she's left when he dies with this mortgage, so she decides that her friend Ellie would be a good candidate who has medical expenses. And she advertises for two more women to join the house so they can each afford to live in a good place, a safe place in a college town. And um, during the time they live there, they each have their own little success uh, that they weren't able to achieve as younger women. So I how long does it was so take? very unique. I'm so surprised to hear such competition in 10-minute plays. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's ferocious. I, I, I was shocked. <laughs> right. The, the one I recently got, uh, the reading of, just a reading, not a production, uh, there were 180 wow. plays submitted. You and a couple of dozen other people I can mention know how to construct one of these things. I do see a lot of people who think, I got an idea and it's a premise. 
mm. and they think that if I sketch out the premise, I've got a 10 minute play. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't, as you say, it doesn't go anywhere and the premise wears thin almost immediately. And um, I think it takes a great deal of skill to put together a really good 10 minute play as opposed to I got an idea and just rolling it out. Mm -hmm. how, how do you go that extra mile? What is it that you think you're bringing to it that separates your work from a lot of others that we've seen that we don't even want to I, talk about? I have help, <laughs> not in that they write for me, but my husband is a great reader and mm -hmm. a great editor, and my friend Patricia Wolf is also a great reader, and um, they will question me. They won't tell me what to do, but they might question and uh, Roger, my husband, always says, it needs an ending. It needs an ending. Mm -hmm. He always thinks that one minute, uh, 10 minute plays don't really have good endings and that's why they fall flat. So He's I, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've done what, five minute plays, one minute plays? I've done I've been all. Sure that's so. <laughs> in, in reading a lot of your wonderful reviews, um, most of the critics say what makes you special is your well-defined characters. And, and how, do, how, do you, how do you make them so well defined? Yes, Where did you find time. that? I want to read that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it is because I really see them and hear them when I'm writing. Not only using actors who I know as my characters, but I also, I, I just, I don't know, it's something weird. I really hear them talking. Mm. And um, I know that they all have to have different voices because we all have different voices, but I, I, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm glad to hear that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of um, people in the arts, or, or in general, anything, anyone who loves doing what they do, they're driven um, to do what they do for some reason. What, what is it that drives you to write plays? Uh, as I mature, I don't want to slow down. I was very fortunate as a child to have parents who felt and said I could do anything. And I've kind of taken that to heart because I've done so many different things in my life. I'm not afraid to try anything. But um, the writing is a way of expressing myself, which sometimes you don't get a chance to in life. You don't get a chance to tell people what's really on your mind. And so a lot of my short plays are about things that are on people's minds, but they might not want to say out loud. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your play that's published, what is it published in? Uh, it's published in the best 10 minute plays of 213. It's by Smith and Krauss, are the very good um, publishers. And it's the play that I've had 15 productions of. Wow. <laughs> so, well, why only that one? Now, <laughs> now that you have a publisher, well, you have to submit along with the other yes. people who submit. And I haven't, I got close. He wanted to produce it, but he has a time span that has to be there. Mm -hmm. And I, it was produced two weeks before the time, so he wouldn't publish it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and the five minute plays, one minute plays, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Let's talk, let's, uh, let's a five minute play. Um, I, I don't know. I started writing this play about two women sitting on a bench waiting for their kids after school. And um, a third woman comes up and tells them that their 13-year-olds ha have been showing their breasts, that they're growing breasts. And I don't know. It just, it, you know, the, the woman who tells about this, about how awful that is, and the other two are saying, no, it's natural. They're, they're growing and they're maturing and they're showing each other what they have. <laughs> so that just turned into five minutes. I guess I had enough okay. to say in five minutes. So it's minutes. only the one? Yeah, and that was published as well. A yeah. one minute play? What's a one minute play? <laughs> Hello, goodbye. <laughs> That's pretty much it, a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> yeah. you, um, uh, the actor Edmund Gwen, who was Santa Claus in Miracle on 34th Street, when he was dying, somebody said, is this hard? And he says, no, dying is easy, <laughs> comedy is hard. Uh, yeah, right. That's and a um, <laughs> you write both, comedy and serious pieces. Is there a different work ethic or a different approach when you're doing that, is, is one harder than the other? Um, 
Most people who know me don't think of me as being funny, but <laughs> my husband thinks I'm funny. I, I have the, the very straight face, you know, when I'm resting. I won't say it on camera, but, but people think that I'm serious or mad or annoyed, and I'm just myself. I'm just sitting it's there. It's called RBF. Yes, <laughs> RBF. But, my husband knows I'm funny because I'm always making him laugh, and he's hard to make laugh. He doesn't laugh out loud in theaters, he smirks. So when I can make him laugh out loud, that's good. But um, some of my plays are comedies. Some of them are serial comedies. Like I have a play that I just found out it's a finalist out of I don't know how many plays. Uh, 22 and they're going to cut it down to eight. I don't know if that's if if I'll make it or not, but at least I'm a finalist. And it's about um, a mature woman who meets at the country club this really attractive, a little bit younger man, and they have a relationship. And the daughter comes to visit and does not understand this. So it is a serious thing in that in that women can have relationships as they age, but throw in the daughter who wants the money and the house, and it becomes a little more serious. Huh. For the um, young playwrights out there, <coughs> would you advise them to take some courses, or would you just say, just write it? I would say take courses or workshops. <clears throat> One of my best monologues was developed out of a workshop at the Kennedy Center. I was. Mm -hmm fortunate enough to be accepted into the program. And Carlos Murillo took photographs and spread them all over the stage and said, pick one and write about them. Mm. And I picked this picture of this 10-year-old black girl who had eyes that were so soulful that I, I couldn't not pick her. And I wrote this monologue, which was just read recently in Texas, in Austin, Texas. And it's been read here in Miami as well. You know, I. She just she had mm. to be talking to me. Mm. So. Yeah, that's wonderful when characters do that. Yeah, that she and just, you're an organizer as well. Yeah, I thought. Well, I know, and uh, you're stage managing. You know, all those contributors that uh, you haven't started a movement down here. You say, I think now you're in a position to teach. Wouldn't you say you could, what you've learned and what you're doing you could teach? Uh, yeah, I, and, I think so. Uh, 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 I, I could see you starting a whole short play movement down here and have them submitted to you or an, a, like a class, like hmm. a workshop. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Isn't that a good idea? I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the Women's Theatre Project, we're going to do it real fast because we're going to wrap up soon, but the Women's Theatre Project used to do um, a Girl Play, which is a short play series, and uh, you would um, curate uh, some of those plays. I read hundreds, hundreds of plays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, on my Excel sheet, uh, I would keep everything. <laughs> uh, and they also produced uh, in your short plays at that time. And I read one of your plays at um, Jam and Cards Play Reading series, which was the name of it was Desperation. Desperation. What 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 kind of life has that had after that process at uh, Jam and Cards? It hasn't had a life I had hoped for. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> it really is appropriate for large community theaters with a lot of women actors. Mm -hmm. And I just, I haven't promoted it. But um, again, it's about finding a date on the internet and they're all older. Mm. And what happens? Yeah. It was done at Lynn University. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was see fun. It there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. Uh, when, yeah. when you were judging these one-act plays. What made you say, yes, I'm interested in doing this and not interested in doing I that? I think what Bill said earlier, it, the plays that have a beginning, a middle, and an end are mm. the ones that are the strongest. They just, and it's so weird, they pop out at you. You don't have to s struggle to find them. They're there, and you read it, and you put, put them in the good pile, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's yeah. that easy. And I don't understand why people don't write better than they do. because I've also read plays uh, as a courtesy for a city theater, and I would read 20 or 25 plays, and maybe one 
was good, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that yeah. there were others, touching my mic here. <laughs> I'm sure there were others, but um, it's hard to find good plays. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. Good, good writing jumps out at you. There, you. There's not much work that you have to do when when a play is well written. Yeah. Oh yeah, the yeah. Steve yeah. playwright right here with Dan. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've also plays. done one of Dan's <laughs> plays at uh, Jan McCart's play reading series yeah. too. So I'm, I'm yeah. but, consider but I, myself yeah, in good company. But I can't write a ten minute play. <laughs> um, we, have to wrap up. <laughs> we, we have to wrap up. We have to wrap up. Thank you. <laughs> so it is a talent. Uh, it is a talent. Yes, it is a talent. A beginning, middle, and the end. <laughs> is there, if someone wants to get in touch with you, how do, how do they do that? Dramamarge at yahoo.com. Dramamarge at yahoo.com. And that's D-R-A-M-A-M-A-R-J yes. for Marjorie yes. we'll at Yahoo. Up. Okay. Thank you for being here with Thank us. Thank you. It was great. Pleasure. You know, we always see each other around town, give each other, give each other a hug and a kiss, but I never really get down, to sit down and talk to you like in the days of the theater, Women's Theater Project. So it's good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you to our panel, and thank you for joining us here today. If you'd like to know what's going on in the South Florida Theater, go to floridatheateronstage.com. Maybe one day you'll see one of Marge's plays listed there that's in production. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but most of all, go to the theater, support the arts, and join us here next week at Spotlight on the Arts. We look forward to being with you again.